Hello again and welcome to Last Time Studios Top 10 Things You Might Not Know. This week, it's The Boondock Saints. This film's a genuine cult classic, right? So the film follows the McManus brothers, played by Sean Patrick Flannery and Norman Reedus. They embark on a holy crusade to rid Boston of evil men. On this journey, they're followed and are blessed with Agent Smecker, played by Willem Dafoe, who honestly is amazing. If you haven't seen it yet, go watch it, like right now. So let's get started with number 10. Number 10, hated by the Catholic Church. Due to the amount of violence portrayed in the script, no Catholic church would allow them to film in their buildings. So the scene where Connor Murphy attends mass ended up being shot in Boston Union United Methodist Church. Director Duffy even alleged that he received a letter from the Archdiocese of Toronto detailing how much they hated the film, even going as far as to say Duffy was the spawn of the devil. And following up on all of the hatred, let's move on to number nine. Number nine, the critics hated the film. So this wouldn't be the first time the critics would get it wrong but the movie was absolutely panned with them describing it as, and I quote, a juvenile ugly movie that represents the worst tendencies of directors channeling Tarantino. I'm pleased the audiences didn't agree. They absolutely loved it. And we absolutely loved it. Once released to DVD, the film managed to pull 260 million in worldwide theatrical and DVD sales. This being mainly due to the positive word of mouth cementing it as a cult classic. Number eight. Thank you, Blockbusters. So for those old enough to remember, we used to go to video and DVD rental stores like Global and Blockbusters, prior to the absolute joy of online streaming services. So back in the day, this was how we got to see newly released films after they'd been to the cinema. Even after its limited cinema run, Blockbuster decided to take an absolute chance on the film, booking exclusive rights to all of the video rentals. Growing in popularity from word of mouth from fans, this film became Blockbuster's highest grossing release in its first six months. Wow, good choice blockbusters, good choice. Number seven, put a pipe in it. So Billy Connolly was so excited and having so much fun playing the psycho killer with guns, quite literally strapped all over him, that in the end, the only way to stop him from smiling was to give him a huge cigar, which he incessantly smokes on screen. What a freaking legend. I can't blame him, I would have been smiling and happy too. Number six, how many? It plays such a role in the film. I think it deserves its very own number. Are you ready for this? The word and its derivatives are used a total of 245 times. Yep, 245 times, and yes, they were all <laughs> required. Seriously. Number five, rejected. In casting, Duffy passed up on some really big names for the project. He refused actors like Keanu Reeves and Ethan Hawke, Sylvester Stallone, Bill Murray, and Mike Myers. Even refusing to meet Brad Pitt because he already played an Irishman in the movie The Devil's Own. And allegedly, Ewan McGregor was in talks to take the main role, but when Duffy flew out and met with him, Duffy was very drunk and the pair had an argument over the death penalty, which led to McGregor firmly passing up the job. <laughs> Number four, especially for you. Character David Della Rocco was actually named after Rocco, the actor who plays him. Rocco and Duffy were good friends and Duffy wrote the character based on him. Number three, plenty of gifts. Okay, so Duffy only wanted to work with producers that really wanted it. And I mean, they had to go above and beyond to get his attention. And in a bid to get the rights to the script, one Harvey Weinstein, yeah, that guy, he promised writer direct that Duffy at least 300,000 for the script, the right to direct and a 15 million production budget. And if that wasn't enough, he even bought the bar where Duffy used to work as a sweetener. Maybe there's some things that money just can't buy. And now for our honorable mentions. The body count on this film is 33 plus one cat. It was shot in just 32 days. In an attempt to look taller on screen, Willem Dafoe wore platform shoes through filming, being mostly noticeable when he bends down to pick the body up in the first scene and in drag, which he pulls off great. I mean, the dude's an absolute legend. The prison number for Sir Billy Connolly's character was actually Troy Duffy's old mobile number. Who knew? And Mark Wahlberg turned down one of the lead roles, choosing to start in Boogie Nights. With all that praying he does, I don't know why I passed up on this one. <laughs> now back in with our list at number two. Number two, there's a first time for everything. The Boondock Saints was composer, writer, and director Troy Duffy's first ever screenplay and movie making project. A lot to take on in your first try. Inspired after witnessing a drug dealer stealing from a corpse across the hall from his apartment. Wow. Duffy was actually working as a bartender and a bouncer at the time and had absolutely no film experience whatsoever. And maybe due to this inexperience, we come to number one, no pay. Due to the contract he signed with the distribution company, neither Duffy nor the producers or principal cast got paid any royalties at all until Duffy sued for royalties 
and the rights for the sequel. Thankfully, the lawsuit found in Duffy's favour with everyone receiving an undisclosed payout and Boondock Saints 2 All Saints Day was made and released in 2009, which is also an absolute banger. Like seriously, if you haven't seen either, you should watch both of these movies now. And there you have it, another top 10 down. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you soon.